once again uh, for this privilege. Uh, thank God and also Pastor Joel for allowing me to use your pulpit here. It's been a blessing, but at the same time, uh, the cubs in my heart right now. You know, you know cubs? Kaba, yeah. man. So whatever that, and it's still a privilege, amen. And we're so really thankful every time we can stand here behind the pulpit to share the word of God. Shall we all stand, please, and let us pray as we've already read the text a while ago. And uh, let us pray that God will give us the wisdom and understanding and open mind and heart to accept and receive His word. Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord, for those messages from the song, from the testimonies of the Lord God that we've heard. Thank you, Lord, because uh, we know that you are always working in our lives and giving us, Lord God, that direction and helping us, Lord God, and molding us. Thank you, Lord, because... Um, with this uh, opportunity and the privilege, Lord, we get to study your word. You will continue to teach us, Lord, and be the one to give us, Lord, that heart and understanding and a love and desire, Lord, to listen and study your word. Please help me as I preach, as I deliver your word. I need your grace, and wisdom, and Holy Spirit. Please be the one to teach me, guide, and anoint my lips. This is all I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. So, uh, yesterday when uh, Brother, John, uh, Brother John started to preach, I was ako. Sabi ko talagang ako na sa Sunday. <laughs> Tapos yun na si Brother Gomer. <laughs> si Brother Gomer. <laughs> Tapos ngayon ako na talaga. <laughs> so, kaya lagi ko yung gusto si Pastor Joel. Pastor, okay na po ba kayo? <laughs> I mean, honestly, and... <laughs> Sabi ko nakikita ko si Pastor Pahang medyo masama para, para karamdam. But again, let's continue to pray for our pastor. Amen? Amen. I know it's uh, his desire to really preach the word of God. Amen? Amen. So let's continue here in our text. Let's go back to our lesson here. As we study the book of Judges chapter 6. We're actually, we're going to study the whole chapter. But uh, please bear with me. Amen? As of now, it's already 11.6. Amen? So uh, please give me ample time to uh, deliver to you the word of God. Now, here in verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian. So this was about the time when the Midianites, uh, with the coalition, uh, coalition I, I'm not, please correct me if I'm wrong with my pronunciation, uh, Coalition, no? Oh, coalition? Coalition. Okay. So whatever. Yeah. With the um, Amalekites as well, they were the ones who oppressed the people of Israel during those days. First, the problem is that because of their sins. Because they turned their backs in worshipping the real, the true, and the powerful God. Now, here in verse uh, 1, we can see here that for 40 years, they had a rest and a peace uh, in the land. But again, following here in the defeat of Caesarea, here it eventually came to an end. Now what's happened here is that if you're going to study the book of Judges, there is a what you call cycle. Okay? They will uh, first, they will uh, turn their backs and worship the idols and there he comes now the realization and he comes now the repentance and then but actually if you're really going to study deeply on this so-called repentance that they are showing when they cried unto the Lord it is not actually the sincere repentance that they have in their hearts why because they always turn their backs after the victory that they always have in their hands now the same thing as what is happening this time now the problem here is that God called here, I mean, God was really concerned with the people of Israel during the time. Now, now we can see here that God started to call Gideon. At first, in chapter 6, he was a coward person. And then if we're going to go to chapter 7, we can see here that he became a conqueror. 
And going to chapter 8, verse number 22 to 35, we can see here, Gideon became a compromiser. Now, but here the Bible clearly explains here the personal struggles of Gideon and his faith with regards to God. No, the same thing as we Christians right now. We will always struggle in our faith. We will always struggle in our service towards God. But knowing that we have a great God, but knowing that God is always in control, what we have to do is what? Hey, we must be thankful because there is always hope in Him. No. It's really sad. Verse 1, the children did evil in the sight of the Lord. This is a big problem that happened during those days. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Median and God brought Israel once again into bondage and by the oppression of the Medianites. But as what we can see here, God's grace still existed during this time. Amen? God's grace and His mercy even though the Israelites were being oppressed. And when those people turned their backs to God. Now, let me give you the title of this message. After I'm giving some titles. So many questions. <laughs> but their answers are so few. Pero nakita parang ibang dating eh. So I changed it. God works in different ways. Amen. 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 Well, this is my struggle right now. Every time I will study the Word of God, I don't have real data title. But again, this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God we're going to study. Now, in verse 13, let's go to there. Let's jump right away. In verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O Lord, my, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now, we can see here that Gideon has little faith. He has little faith. But again here, he said, but now the Lord has forsaken us. But take note, point number one, we can see here God's concern for his people. Amen. We might lose our course along the way, but God is always reminding us and helping us so that we can return to the right track and move forward towards him. This was Gideon's response to the Lord's message. And yet the Lord had given Israel proof of his personal concern. Now we can see here in verses number 1 to 6, the chastening. In Proverbs chapter 3, 11 and 12, it says here, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 please. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. I'm sorry. Even as the as the father of the son, uh, the son in whom he delighteth. According to Spurgeon, the Lord does not permit his children to sin successfully. God wants his children to what? To see the real purpose why these things is happening in our lives because of what we are doing towards him. Chastening is the evidence of God's hatred for sin and his love for his people amen? amen so we can conceive of the whole of the holy god wanting any less than his very best for his children and the best he can give us is what a holy character like that of the lord jesus christ the chastening remember that obedience to the lord builds character amen but sin destroys character take note kahit anong gawin mo we are in the flesh. Magkakamalit, magkakamali ka. Wala kang magagawa. Pero, mag-iingat ka. Nagkakamali, nagkakamali ka. And God cannot uh, sit idly by and watch His children 
destroy themselves. God will not allow that. Now here, as we can see here, Israel already had experienced 43 years of suffering under the harsh control of the neighboring nations because of their what? Mistake. Because of their sins. But they hadn't yet learned their lessons and turned away from the heathen idols. It's really sad. Take note that unless our suffering leads to repentance, it accomplishes no lasting good. And unless our repentance is evidence of a holy desire to turn from sin, not just escape from the pain, or what they call repentance is only what they call remorse. Take note of that. Chastening. But again, chastening assures us that we are truly God's children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Naramdaman mo yung pagpalo sa'yo, anak ka ng Diyos. Praise the Lord. Pasalamatan mo yan. And that we can't get away with rebellion. Remember here that the Midianites organized a coalition okay, of nations to invade the land in Judges chapter 6 verse 3. Let's take a look there. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. What happened here? All Israel could do is to what? Just flee. To the hills and hide in the caves. And then when the Jews returned to their homes, all they can see and observe was those what? Devastated and those homes were being destroyed by the enemies. And they had to suffer another year without enough food. Chastening. I don't imagine that. But take note, hindi nagkulang ang Diyos sa pagre-remind sa kanila. Second here is what you can see. The rebuke from the Lord. In verse number 7 to, uh, to 10. Verse 7, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. Okay? That the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Whoa. Have you noticed here? Every time the people of Israel com uh, commit a uh, uh, mistake, okay, God is always reminding them, Hey, remember, I delivered you from the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage. I led you in the uh, uh, wilderness. I provided food for you. When the uh, Egyptians tried to follow you, I was there protecting you. God is always reminding them. Why? Because they kept on neglecting the teachings and the promises and those things that God did in their lives. Hey, have you forgotten what the Lord has done in your lives? Are you thankful of those, of those things? Hey, we can see here, God used an unnamed prophet. To remind them of their disobedience to the Lord. He reminded them of the wonderful way God delivered them from Egypt. And God's generosity in providing food for them. God is always reminding us. So when God will keep on reminding us, all we have to do is what? To absorb and try to understand what He is saying to us. Pero nakakalungkot yung iba, hindi pinapansin ng ginagawa ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Hey! What happened here? The people of Israel suffered. It is not because of what they're doing. It is because of their fault. Not God's fault. Amen? It wasn't God's fault. Because God had given them everything. That's why when you read the New Testament epistles, you can notice that the apostles took the same approach when they admonished the believers to whom they wrote. The apostles repeatedly reminded the Christians that God what, had saved them so that they might live obediently 
and serve the Lord faithfully. That's a reminder. Sister Milka, Ephesians 4 1, please. Ephesians 4 4 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walked worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Amen. As God's children, we are to walk what? Worthy. Okay? Of high and heavenly calling and leave people who were what? Seated with Christ in glory. Colossians 3 verse 1. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Take note that the motive of uh, for Christian living is not that we might gain something we don't have, but that we might live up to what we already have in Christ. Take note, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we don't deserve anything here. We don't deserve. It's only by the grace of God why we are here right now. It's all by the grace of God why God is uh, until now still using us. It's because of God. That's why the purpose of chastening is to make God's children willing to listen to God's word. Amen? That's the purpose. Often after spanking a child, parents will reassure the children of their love and then clearly explain and admonish to them to listen to what they say and obey. Amen? mo, hindi ka matutuwa eh. Pagkatapos eh, malulungkot ka. And I mean, not that, na, malulungkot, hindi ka natutuwa pag dinisipin naman yung anak. But you have to do that. And if you are going to ignore, then we must endure the second. At the first, you, you're neglecting, you're just neg uh, rejecting what God is telling you, then there's a second procedure. One way or another, the Lord is going to get our attention and try to deal with us. Amen. <coughs> Another thing here. Helping. 11 to 13. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Ab Abiezrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press. By the way, let me explain when I say wine press. This is a hewn stone in a rectangular shape uh, uh, that is, that's divided into uh, sometimes uh, three rows, okay, where those grapes are placed on that area and then it is being trodden underfoot. This is a wine press. And then those grapes will be extracted, and then the juices will, uh, the ju those juices will uh, just flow on the, uh, what they call, uh, the canal, or uh, I would say on those uh, areas going into the vat, where those grapes will be uh, 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 moved there and will be fermented. That's the wine press. Amen? Because we know the wine press, yung nasa ilalim siya ng wine press. No? I'm just uh, the pressure done, <laughs> diba? Chan magaling iba sa mga jokes. Di yung joke, ha? Eh, biro lang po. So, wine press. Now, as we continue here, to hide it from the Midianites. Now, see how humiliating what happened here? Now, the purpose of those wheels that they're gathering, uh, actually, they, the, the, the right place or the proper place that they must uh, uh, do those, uh, removing those shafts, must be on a higher place where the wind can easily blow the shaft that comes from the wheat. But what happened here? He's removing the shaft on the wine press. See how humiliating what happened to them here? Amen? So the people were crying out to the Lord for help. So as people usually do when they, they're in trouble. Well, have you noticed? 
when we don't have any problem, uh, we don't care. Yes, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But when we are not experiencing uh, problems in life, and that's the time to uh, we bend our knees and Lord, please help me, help me. Are you aware with that? Take note. Nasa katagumpayan ka man o hindi, dapat matuto ka pa rin manalangin at mapasalamat sa Panginoon. Gideon has a lot of questions and doubts. But again, the Israel gave new evidence of real repentance here. Isaiah 63, 9, please. Isaiah 63, 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Take note that he does not treat us. In the Psalm 103 verse 10, please. Psalm 103 verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Take note of that. God, is, in His mercy, doesn't give us what we do deserve and in His grace. But He gives us what we don't deserve. Amen? So when you consider the kind of Gideon, what I was at this time, you wonder why God selected him. Para bang, kagamitin mo talaga ito ng Diyos? Tin mo mukha ang pangit? Parang ganun. I'm sorry uh, for our, uh, uh, I will speak in Filip Filipino for a while, okay? Uh, because my English is, uh, you know, <laughs> one inch. So, take note. In 1 Corinthians 1, 26-29, please. I really like this verse. I like this. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 20, please. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's the purpose. Amen. God can choose you in different God can use you in different ways. In your ability. Amen. And those characteristics or attitudes that you have, God can use you in that way. And you must praise God for that because He is helping us. Amen. Now, take note that in Judges chapter 6, verse number 25 to 32, Gideon's family worshiped Baal. By the way, when I read the uh, notes with regards to the worshiping Baal, by the way, during those days, the reason why the Israelites were worshipping Baal, not only because they were oppressed by these uh, heathen nations, but Baal was also the god of weather. And they are depending, okay, with regards to their uh, agricultural products, when it comes to what they call the weather and climate that they're experiencing during those days. That's the reason why they're worshipping Baal. Although we have no reason to believe that Gideon joined them. There's no record here. Maybe J J uh, Gideon was uh, secretly uh, uh, worshipping the Lord while nobody was there. We don't know. But again here, when Gideon called himself the least in my father's house, he may have been suggesting that his family treated him like an outcast because he didn't worship Baal. This is the reason. Oh, that was a great, uh, a great and a big struggle during that time. Imagine your whole family are worshiping Baal, and then you alone was there. Hmm? I don't care. 
But God chose Gideon. Amen? Kaya nga, oh, wala kang karapan na nasabihin mo. No? Na pag tao na kami na hindi na pwede gamitin ng Diyos. Because God can use in different ways. Take note on that. Hmm? Take note on that. We cannot say that. Now, as we continue here, Gideon wasn't a man of strong faith or courage. And God had a, to patiently work with him to prepare him for leadership. That's the purpose. God is always molding us. God is always what? Helping us to develop our characteristics and attitudes towards Him as we go on through. Kaya hindi mo pwede sabihin na dapat perfect na ang buhay dapat na hindi pa makamit. Hindi. Araw-araw kasi eh, inaayos tayo ng Diyos. Minumol tayo ng Diyos. Tandaan po natin yan. Amen? That's why if you say, na-offend ako sa Kanya, ang hina mo namang kasyano. Are you serving the person? Are you serving the pastor? Hey! We are serving the God who is in heaven. Kaya nga, sawang-sawan ako makinig na. Open ako kay Brad. Open ako kasi sa sawang-sawang. Ayaw ko pakinggan. Nakakainis. Yes, totoo lang. Nakakainis. Tinitingnan mo ba yung kapatid na yan dahil sa ginagawa niya? Nakakainis. Don't get wrong at me. You might... Totoo. Diba? Kaya sabi ko kanina, sa mga men, sa church, uh, sa, during our Bible study, I told them, in, in our spirit, we must have that enthusiasm, the joy in service towards our God. Amen? Don't get me wrong. Pag pupunta ng village, wag, wag na magtanong ka ng oras sa alis, alam mo na naman eh. <laughs> Anong oras, Alice? Para bang gusto mo sabihin na, Alice, ba tayo? <laughs> Amen? No? no? Don't get me wrong, okay? Yeah. So, so, nakakalungkot lang, amen? So, saan ba tayo? Let's continue. Philippians 2, 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12 to 13. Uh, si Mel kasi, tinuturuhan ako niyan ng pronunciation eh. So wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, please. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen? God had to patiently work with, our, with us and prepare us for leadership. And God is always ready to make us what we ought to be. If, what? We are willing to submit in His will. That's it. So Gideon's negative response to the Lord's words indicates his lack of faith and spiritual perception. But again, here was Almighty God telling him that He, has, he was with him and would make him what? A conqueror. And Gideon replied by denying everything God said. But again, because of his, God's mercy and because of his grace, what? God spent more time with Gideon, turning his question marks to what? Exclamation points. Praise the Lord for that. So Gideon was living by sight, not by faith. And he had been, he, and he remained that way. He would never be named among the heroes of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse. Chapter 11 verse. Chapter 11. Okay. Forgetting those things. Point number two. God's wisdom. Now let's go back to our text here. In verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? That was the Lord's statements. 
should have given Gijon all the assurance he needed. Everything was given. But he wouldn't believe God's word. And this is like Moses, when God called Moses, remember? In Exodus chapter 3, verses number 7 to 12. The same. Whose story Gideon surely knew since he was acquainted with the Hebrew history in Judges chapter 6, verse 30. You know the history. Amen. And I believe when his uh, forefathers shared about what happened in the past, he had that knowledge. But what happened here? Because of the oppression, because of the struggle, they find hard time to what? Really stand and contend for the faith. Now, it has been said that God's commandments are what? God's enablements. Amen? So once God has called and commissioned us, all we have to do is what? To obey Him and be faithful to Him. That's it. Oh. Because God will do the rest. God cannot lie and God never fails. Faith means obeying God in spite of what we see. How we feel or what the consequences might be. But again, Gideon's statement or statement about the poverty of his family is a bit uh, awkward or uh, something like dece deceiving because if we have noticed here, Okay. When God instructed uh, Gideon to destroy the statue of Baal, Gideon wasn't alone. He was with what? His servants. So when you say that they're poor, something like a question mark. You know, if a person is uh, doubting and if a person has a lot of questions, he or she can give a lot of reasons not to obey and follow. Amen? Ay, wag bumbrad ang init. Grabe ang init ng lugar nila ba na Alex? Kana ba na dyan ang init ng 2 o'clock alis? You can give a lot of reasons. Amen? You can give. Sabi mo, galit na naman kayo sa akin. Amen? Bahala kayo sa buhay niya. No. It may be that the clan of Beazer also, which Gideon family belonged to, was not an important clan in Manasseh during those days. But again, once God has revealed His will to us, we must never quiz, uh, what they call question His wisdom or argue with His plans. Never. Romans 11.34 Romans 11.34 Remember God's wisdom. Point number two. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Isaiah 4, 40 verse 13. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. The question is, can you search out the deep things of God? Oh, deep things, about the going wrong. Can you search out the deep things of God? No, you can't. The question, another question is, can you find out the limits of the Almighty God? No, you can't. So when we review the, oh God's gracious uh, promises to Gideon, you wonder why this young man wavered in his faith. Everything has been uh, uh, confirmed. Everything has been uh, shown to him. Lack of faith. Amen. God promised to be with him and God called him a mighty man of valor. Amen. And promised that he would save Israel from the Midianites and smite them as one man. This is the promise of God. That's why in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. 
The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. Everything is already given to them. And then Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. Everything was already was been displayed, has been displayed, given to, to Gideon. But Gideon didn't receive that word and needed assurance to God. Too many questions, amen? But the answers are so few. Too many questions. Now let's continue here. Gideon asked a sign to assure, to assure that it was really the Lord who was speaking to him. So, of course, the Lord was very uh, accommodating. Okay, sure. The Lord waited until Gideon prepared those presents. And God gave the confirmation what? All those uh, food that were placed on the rocks were what? Burned. That was a confirmation that God what? Spoke to Gideon. But still Gideon has the doubts. That's the problem. Our problem is this. We Christians, we already have the word of God, but we still have doubts. I don't understand. Doubts. The sudden appearance of fire and disappearance of the visitor convinced Gideon that indeed he had seen God and spoken to him. So, God had to give Gideon a message of what? Peace. And prepare him for the war. Take note. Unless we are at peace with God, we can face the enemy with confidence and fight the Lord's battles. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. So whenever God calls us to a task that we think is beyond us, we must be careful to look to God and not to ourselves. Look to God and not ourselves. That's why when God asked Abraham, is there anything hard for the Lord? Go to the book of uh, New Testament, Luke one thirty seven. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. And then the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That's the promise of God. Amen. So, as we continue here, point number three, God's protection. Amen. Bilisan natin habang inantok na yung iba. God's protection. Verse number 25. Twenty-five to uh, thirty-two, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, "Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it." Point number three: God's protection. <laughs> God's protection. So, if you have noticed here, yay. Okay, what kind of a day did Gideon have after this dramatic meeting with the Lord? I mean, if you're going to notice here, Gideon actually destroyed the altar. But he did it by night. As for fear against those uh, people who are living there. But again, the hand of God was there. Amen. The hand of God was there. Protecting and helping uh, Gideon. What he did? He destroyed the altar of Baal. 
And then if we're going to continue to read here, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of his rock, and in, in, uh, in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood that grow, which thou shalt cut down. Now, verse 27, And then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said, unto him and so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night yes he destroyed the statue of Baal but the good thing is that he f followed the Lord amen you do lack the courage to do this the day uh, in daytime yet it is better to what? Follow the Lord. Than rejecting it. So Baal worship was a very popular during those days. Because of the oppression. And not only that, because they lack knowledge from the word of God. Nobody had reminded them of who the real God is. Of who must be the God that must be worshipped. Nobody reminded them about that. And everything has been forgotten. This is the problem during those days. But again, God's protection was there. Amen. Now, as we continue here, verse 28, And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, Behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. Verse 29, And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, and asked they said, Gideon the son of Joash hath done this thing. Of course, he cannot hide it. They were not able to, uh, it wasn't hard for them to figure out who was responsible in destroying the altar. Gideon was found out immediately. But again, this should be the time that Gideon must stand firm and tell them that what they are worshipping is not a real God. This must be the time. That's why for some of you who are not contending for the faith, you keep on the... Uh, uh, doing other business there, you keep on uh, saying something against those people who are contending for the faith, shame on you. So this side. Kaya nga, di mo naman pala gusto ginagawa dito. Bakit ayaw mo umalis? Dito ka pa. Di ba? No. No. The man of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar Baal, and because he hath cut down the groove that was by it. But again, I believe God also will work in the life of Joash, the father of Gideon, that he protected his son against those people who are worshipping Baal. He said, Okay. If he is really a great God, why? Okay, you contend for him. Okay, you support him. But again, if he is a real God, why he cannot save himself? That's a big question. That really uh, touched the hearts of those people who were there during the time. Then, point number four, last point here. God's faithfulness. Amen. I like the part here, verse 33. Then all the Midianites and Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and they blew a trumpet and Abiezer was gathered after him. Take note that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. In the Old Testament, take note that the Holy Spirit comes upon specific people. For, for what? Specific reasons. 
during the time. So usually for divinely empowered leadership. So that's how the Holy Spirit works in the lives of those people in the Old Testament. So here the Midianites, their allies made their annual invasion. Take note, they will just uh, let all those uh, Israelites to uh, plant. And then after having those produce, they will uh, go to the land of Israel and what? Get all of those harvest. Imagine how uh, terrifying that was. Amen. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But again, it was the time that Gideon needs to act. And the Spirit of God gave him the wisdom and the power he needed. Take note. God is always faithful. He is always faithful. Here, Gideon blew the trumpet first in his own hometown. And the men of Abiezer rallied behind them. And here Gideon's information in the town had actually accomplished something. Then he, he sent messengers throughout his own tribe of Manasseh, of Manasseh, as well as the neighboring tribes of Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali. All these four tribes, what? Gathered towards him to fight against the Amalekites. Again, Jehovah God was on their side. And he had promised them victory. That was God's faithfulness. As we go on to this, it's almost time. I'm going to make a shortcut on this. And yet, again, Jacob, ah, Jacob, Gideon, as another sign from the Lord. The first sign was that, place a fleece on the ground. He said, Lord, and the next day, if the fleece will get wet, and then the ground will be dry, then that's it, Lord, your sign. Then the next day, it happened. The fleece was so wet, but the ground was dry. And yet, Gideon has another sign. But this time, the ground must be the one to be wet. And the place must be dried. Everything. But God confirmed everything. That's how God understands our faith towards Him. God is always giving us chances for us to know. And for us to realize what we're doing towards Him. But again, even though Gideon reminded God twice, and twice Gideon's Ask God to reaffirm His promises with a miracle. But again, the good thing is that God stood Gideon's weaknesses and made him strong. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are all weak. We cannot do anything to fight against the battles in life. We need God to be on our side. But again, as we continue here, Gideon spent two days playing with the, what we call a fleece game. It's normal sometimes, we keep on playing with God. Even though we already know, and it's very clear to us, the confirmation, because we have already seen it from the Word of God. But we keep on playing with God. It's so sad. But again, before we go going to judge Gideon, we should consider the challenge, the, the challenge that is ahead of him. Many of us would dismiss such a call out of hand without even considering or allowing God to confirm it. This is also our mistake most of the time. We lack confirmation from the Lord. We just try to uh, make our own step without con having confirmations from the Lord. That's another mistake sometimes. But again, in Hebrews 11.32, Gideon's weak faith is greater than no faith. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of, of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Take note. There was nothing for Gideon to do but to confront 
his enemies and trust God for the victory. That's why Brother Gomer, uh, I read this last time in his uh, lesson, 1 John 5, 4. We'll end up here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Amen? Amen. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So God works in different ways. His concern, His wisdom, His protection, and His faithfulness. Brothers, Jesus, and the Lord, be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful. If I will call a pastor, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord, for the message, for challenging us. I pray, Father, that